if you ever look through my phone, you will see <laughs> so many notes. I just think of something and I write it down. Then you look at my voice notes and it's scattered all the way through. That's how the Lord speaks to me. He like whispers little snippets and I'm like, oh, you know what? That's really sick, God. Like I'm gonna write that down and think of that. What is a heart disposed to songwriting? And it really means that you're just have this encounter with God. And as you shared that you sort of hear it as a melody and then write that down or you record it and you just remember it. Welcome to Music and Mission, where we explore identity, vocation, and mission through music and conversation. Revisiting the past, what is it about art that allows us to vivid, vividly revisit the past? Like, have you ever uh, re-watched a movie or TV show that you used to love as a kid? A lot of people are watching The Last Airbender. <laughs> or have you ever heard a song that was from a past relationship? Oh, there is something about art that has an ability to teleport us. And there is a, a moment that Pope John Paul II references in his letter to artists. It is this uh, dialogue that happened in the Sistine Chapel back in a 1960-something. Pope Paul VI mentions this word. I mentioned it last time, but it really rung out to me called Einfalung. Uh, this ability to inform by way of feeling that by which way of thought we can't uh, express or understand. And uh, Pope Paul VI said artists are able to bring about that Einfalung. And I got really curious, what is that word? It's so interesting. I looked it up and another way to put it, 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 uh, it comes from where we get empathy from. Uh, it's one of the root words of that. And uh, there's somebody who describes it as this the human capacity to enter into a piece of art and feel the emotions that the artist had worked to represent. And I think that really describes that ability to teleport that art gives us, that songs give us. And so my guest today will be playing songs from her past. All of these songs are from over five years ago. But God has evidently used her gifts to reach out to others. She's the writer of a song we use for worship in our community called Reaching. And myself, too, being somebody who has sometimes taken long breaks from songwriting, I am really looking forward to exploring the way that God persists through these songs, especially through long periods of time and, and through talking with her to understand more the way that God grants and uses this gift of songwriting uh, to endure. And so let's welcome, playing an original song entitled Val, welcome to Music and Mission, Monica Lou Ponce.
Welcome, Monica. Hi. Thank you How so you? much for having me here. <laughs> I of am course. doing well. It is 29 degrees, so I might be sweating or <laughs> throw my deodorant on or something. Oh, wait. For our American viewers, you have to uh, translate that to Fahrenheit. <laughs> oh, oh, shoot. I don't know what that is. Because that sounds really cold to me, <laughs> if, if in Fahrenheit. Right, right. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Jeez, I'm so, I'm so insensitive. <laughs> but yeah, because you are from Canada. Yes, I didn't say that at the beginning. Surprise. <laughs> um, yeah, but thanks for sharing. We have to talk about, um, we mentioned it a little before, but there was some kind of synth emanating from, or was that just the angels joining you in song? In oh the my background? gosh, yikes. <laughs> Um, no, I'm using a an app on my phone called AutoPad, Auto and I think um, it's actually specifically designed for worship. And uh, during COVID and the pandemic, I think a lot of people in music ministry, of course, we're trying our best to worship, but what is a way where we can kind of make it sound more full or at least capture the same atmosphere as we would um, when we're around each other presently and I think I remember sharing with a friend I was like with a synth because I was thinking like why don't we just have any kind of synth and then put it close to your mic and I remember we tried it out I'm like yo it sounds sick it sounds like legit <laughs> or people are like is is she like stepping on a keyboard with her toe during the entire time <laughs> <laughs> but no it's um it's my phone and the cool thing is i think it unlocked a lot of things because you can you don't have to necessarily get the app but you can also go on spotify and i think they have um worship since and as well as youtube they also have since too so it's really cool and you can pick your keys and um pick your which types of synths that you like. So it's really cool to match if you're playing like a higher song or if you want a lower synth to kind of complement whatever sound you're going for. It's really good. It's, I think it's a game changer for online worship for me. Yeah, it, yeah. it made a huge difference. You can really tell that it changes the atmosphere. Totally. It's so cool. Great. That's awesome. Well, yeah, that song, uh, maybe it was the synth or I think also the actual prayer of the song uh, was truly, I think, a very worshipable. Uh, and I know that uh, besides a songwriter, you're really a worship, a worshiper, a music minister at heart. What, how did you first start sort of as, as a worshiper? Ooh, that's a good question. I think it really started when I was in grade seven and here in Surrey, that's where I'm from for all my American viewers, <laughs> <laughs> um, in my parish called St. Matthew's Parish. And in grade seven, I, that's when, at least here, you encounter the sacrament of confirmation. And so we actually, there was a retreat for confirmation I think there was like 50 or 60 of us and um, it's actually a mo it's like a modeled after a like any kind of camp or like a youth for Christ camp mm -hmm. and I think the very first thing I noticed was like a full band like playing songs and I was like loving it I was like wow like there's bass there's drums there's no just piano or guitar but it was like a full band experience and I remember myself like being super into it. And afterwards in grade seven, I joined my first um, Youth for Christ camp. And again, I got to experience like a full band. And I noticed that there weren't a lot of females in music ministry. <laughs> and so um, that combined with my love for the Jonas Brothers back then. I, yeah, seriously, I learned guitar because like, um, Jonas Brothers, like SOS and Nick Jonas, I was like, yo, that is so cute. And I, I don't know, I got inspired. So praise God for the Jonas Brothers, clearly. Um, but I learned, I taught myself guitar so I could 
play for households and at the same time um because there's some worship songs that are just male dominated and they're so either too high or too low for sisters <laughs> or women to sing so that combined with theory like really um I think there's so many ways of making worship comfortable or adaptable for other people. So it really started from um, music and just the whole full band experience that made me fall in love with worship and obviously fall more in love with Christ through that. Amen. That's beautiful. Yeah, in, in the U.S., not so much anymore, but we used to always just take every song and just transpose it to the key of E. Let's because go, that's yeah. the yeah, the magic key. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, <laughs> key of that, E, key of D, yeah. anything with the key of C, because we don't like bar chords, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was our solution. Rather than um, finding creative uh, women worshipers to solve the actual problem at the heart, which is write <laughs> songs that are comfortable for sisters to sing, it was more like, let's just take everything and change the key <laughs> right right totally but it's not sometimes it's not easy for people to do if they don't if they don't know how to so but that's awesome uh yeah just from seeing a full band which also saddens me a bit or reminds me of what what once was months ago it's so crazy to think like we haven't i haven't jammed with anybody in the way we normally would for six months seven months Jeez. right have you tried to um, do an online jam and then have the lag and it's like, oh, snap. Like, no, there? not not with the lag, but we've done it where, okay, we're going to put up the chords. Everybody mute except this one person. And then we play along. I love it's, it. Yeah. Know, it, it's awesome, but it is still not the same. There's the element of uh, playing off of one another that you, mm-hmm. you just cannot get, which is part of it. Talking to each other without even saying a word. Ah, oh, miss that. That awkward, like, overlap. Oh, like, oh, sorry, okay, you go ahead. Yeah. And then the Wi-Fi connection, and they leave, right? And then, like, oh, my gosh, where did they go? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, beautiful uh, to know that you got your start in and desire uh, for worship and writing, sort of from a desire to help others to worship more. Mm-hmm. I guess what when did it shift from... Uh, music ministry and worshiping to uh, or when was the spark to try to write songs for you now you hit me with a curveball I feel like you should I should have screened these questions (laughs) (laughs) like uh, can I call for help call for help yeah you get one call (laughs) um ooh I never really thought of that um the very first song that I legitimately wrote is with a bunch of people. I actually wrote it with my brother Ron. Shout outs. If you'll see this. I don't know if you'll see this. Um, and some of my cousins and some of like my Kuya's older brothers in the community. And it kind of started from a collective thought. However, when I started writing songs alone, I felt that what could inspire me was through the sacraments. And I know for myself, like if I need to write something or prepare for something, I have to go to mass, go to confession, go to adoration, or spend some time with Jesus before writing. Because, G- or sorry, reaching is actually about going to confession. And um, the first song, like my vow to the Lord, is something that I would sing to the Lord like through adoration if i could stop crying in adoration you know (laughs) like the ugly crying it's like jesus like yeah so it's it really it starts with um the sacraments or even going or reading the daily readings or reading the bible i can't write about someone if i don't know him you know what i mean which is weird because i don't know i actually fun fact i I've never written like a full on love song. I only have written worship songs. And I think it's maybe <laughs> I just haven't invested time enough or haven't been inspired. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. My boyfriend's probably like, what? I'm just kidding. 
Sorry, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> this is not screen. It's not screen. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Well, a worship song is a love song. True. It's kind of hard to write about a lesser man when Jesus is already the ultimate man. Just kidding, Sean. Sorry. I haven't even really formally met Sean. <laughs> Only in passing. <laughs> this is great. This is great. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. I, I love uh, what you said about it being rooted in the sacraments. There's this part in Letter to Artists that says, um, every genuine inspiration contains some tremor of that breath. Oh, special guest. <laughs> You're featuring. <laughs> All that printing noises or the, the furniture movie. This from my dad. Are you going to say hi, dad? No, he's, he's embarrassed. That's why. Uh, but yeah, every genuine inspiration contains some tremor of that breath with which the creator spirit suffused the work of creation from the very beginning. And so I think when you say you, you find it in the sacraments, rooted in the sacraments first, it's it's really just that breath from reconciliation from Eucharist that like the songs that you you have mentioned are written which is beautiful praise the Lord what's the next song you have that was uh, brought about by the breath of the spirit um, the next song is called every day and I'm laughing because I remember when you asked me to do this and you're like round up like three to four songs and I wrote this song in 2012 for I believe the youth for con youth for Christ conference theme was called Almighty and I challenged myself because writing slower songs much is much easier than writing a fast song and so I was like let's write a fast song let's do it and then now that I listen to it I'm like it really sounds very kiddish or like I don't know, it's, to me, I'm just, and I got teased a lot because everyone's like, it's so like cutesy and kid-like. <laughs> kid and I'm thinking or discerning, like, maybe I should just give it to Kids for Christ. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. This is yeah. called? Every Day. Every Day. All it's right. been a while. So if I forget any lyrics, this is live. Very live. <laughs> All right, take it away.
Amen. Like really, really kid-like, right? <laughs> it was awesome, though. <clears throat> I also think uh, KFC is where it's at. They're, the the dances and the level of production on their songs is like, oh. If you want to lose weight, go to KFC. <laughs> Yeah, but that was awesome. I also don't think it was so. I, I can see it being it you like dancing to, but I, I think um, I don't see. Uh, I mean, in the prayer itself is not kid like. You know, I think that's mm-hmm. that's what's key. Thank you. Amen. So that song was from twenty twelve. Yes, twenty twelve. The first one was twenty thirteen. Yes. I guess my question is, because I think I relate to this, it, it, it has been a while since you have written songs. Is that correct? Yes. Why is that, and, and why do you think that is? I actually was reflecting on this, and I think it took a lot of humility to actually admit this. But I think when I was younger, I you know, when you're younger, there's some sort of innocence, carefreeness, joyfulness. And I felt like it was so easy to write songs because I, I guess was that in a way like that innocence, it was easy for me to write a song because I just wasn't as cynical as I am today. <laughs> no, I'm in it. I'm, I'm, and I, someone asked me like, how come you haven't written any songs? And then I said, I don't have time. And then I realized, the issue is I'm not making time to have the time to write something. And um, yeah, I, I feel like everyone's like, are you going to be a one hit wonder? And I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's worship. So I, I guess I just do. Um, I'm in in the later years, especially transitioning to singles for Christ. It's not that I'm not as emotional or experiencing emotional highs. I'm I'm kind of here kind of venturing off to discover truth and obviously keeping my feelings and vulnerability with me. But it's more of now that I know that I'm loved by Jesus, like how can I grow that more? How can I be a better Catholic? And actually... Over the summer, I did something very, very out of my comfort zone, but it's actually one of my dreams besides having a song for Live Loud, but I actually wrote uh, music to mass parts. So, and I submitted it for like this competition in our diocese. So I'll probably share it with you after this. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. Or you should have just played it for this. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I'm so shy. See, you know, I'm getting sweaty. (laughs) <laughs> yeah 29 degrees it's okay 29 degrees i wonder how much that is in fahrenheit yeah we'll never know there's no way to convert it right um yeah that's interesting uh in your case it's the you're saying sort of uh from a place of carefreeness and maybe some of it is uh, like you said it was had to dig out the reason and there's sort of a maybe a cynicism or uh, a different uh, look at what songwriting was to you back then. Um, there's another part from Letter to Artist where PJP2, he says, works of art speak of their authors. They enable us to know their inner life and they reveal the original contribution which artists offer um, to the history. So I think uh, what you were mentioning is uh, these, especially not just the work of art itself the songs itself and the prayer in them teleporting back to that time but also when you sort of uh, now stretch out and look at the history of monica lou from 2012 13 14 15 to monica lou now it also speaks of where you're at as far as your faith journey and in 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 your sense it came from a time of uh maybe more innocence or carefreeness the at least that the place that your songs came from for me i know that 
at at the early years, my songs came from a place of vanity and and uh, wanting to be known and competitions, comparison, wanting to win, etc. Um, and so, me too. The the sort of journey of songwriting, and when I look at it over time, is okay, becoming more mature in what a song would be, mm-hmm. um, or, or yeah, it's just it. The same motivations back then don't hold up anymore to me. So having to find that new grounding and that new footing. And I think you're also on the same journey and in the same realization in your own way because you just said it that now you're more mature visiting of songwriting is for the liturgy, which is beautiful. Praise the Lord. Again, like start with sacraments. Here we are. Well, let's just hope and pray that it gets approved one day. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That'd be so cool. Uh, the um, oh yeah, because your I think what's also unique is is all the songs that you're sharing is are really rooted in their worship songs. I think other people I've been talking to, you know, have have worship songs and then have sort of uh, songs just from their life as a Catholic that, you know, have come out the some of the more, uh, you know, different different kinds of emotions and prayers um, have turned into song. So so for you, uh, when it comes to songwriting and it seems rooted very much in worship setting and worship prayers. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why is that? How come those songs for you really come from a place of worship? Right. Um, sorry, side note. When you were talking about your songs, mm. I really love that the concept of peace be with you. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, this is so cute. And I, <laughs> I was like, when is a good time to say it? So I'm just going to just drop it now. Oh, Super cute. Praise God. <laughs> um, uh, well, first and foremost, if you ever look through my phone, you will see <laughs> so many notes that there's like, there's no connection. It's, I just think of something and I write it down. Then you look at my vo- voice notes and it's scattered all the way through. And I think that's how the Lord speaks to me. Not in a, not to say like he doesn't speak to me in a grand gesture, but he like whispers little snippets and I'm like, Oh, you know what? That's really sick, God. Like I'm gonna write that down and think of that because um, with reaching, really unorthodox way of writing, the bridge came first, and everything else followed. And I feel like with any of the songs that God uses me to write, um, if I myself am not in a position of worshiping, then I can't produce like a worship song and I think that's why a lot of my songs or the pieces that God inspires me to write are kind of very worship themed versus my own personal experience because I think like when I start to write something about myself I'm just gonna cry all the time so just kidding I'm great I'm great I'm all <laughs> I'm great <laughs> I'm good um but yeah it's it's mostly I like to keep in mind, I'm like, is this easy to play um, with the kind of subject? Like, what does, chances are, like, if I'm thinking this way, I'm pretty sure someone else is feeling the same way. And what helps to you, like, if I am writing about something, like, I'll kind of just talk to someone and be like, how are you doing? Like, and I get inspiration through people's experiences versus sharing my own. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm too scared that way, but. Work in progress. Maybe for the next songs, right? Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And you mentioned something that that hit me uh, when you were saying you have this list of voice notes and notes. So in the last five years, you have amassed many voice notes. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Praise okay. God for technology because they... Keeps, if you keep staying with the iPhone, it just keeps over. It keeps. <laughs> <laughs> There's one time I did have a Samsung and I did lost. I did lose some of them, but that's okay because I was an LG then, so it's fine. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh! But that's crazy. So the ah, because I think that 
there is when we talk about songwriting sometimes well we think of writing songs yeah because that's the word but there is a fast that i did with um these two sisters vanessa and gabby um and we were in music men and we were seasoned music ministers and we were saying like oh man we we have a danger of just kind of we'll just do this last minute there's a danger of that because we already know the drill so we really wanted to do something that would take us out of our comfort zones Mm -hmm. and so we said we're gonna make uh, every single day we have to send each other a two-line prayer like a recorded two-line prayer um And uh, out of all of us, Vanessa was the only one to accomplish it every day, (laughs) which is awesome. But point being is uh, I think as you mentioned that your voice notes and your notes that you take and these pieces of prayers that God sends you and then they turn into uh, you hear them as a song. They come out as some kind of melody Mm -hmm. that to me, that's that's really the heart of songwriting. Um, That's really the heart of this uh, divine spark that uh, Pope John Paul II talks about. It's that. When you pray, it comes out as song and it comes out as melody. And I think that um, when when somebody asks you, for example, like, have when's the last time you wrote a song? Are you gonna be a one hit wonder? And and I think that there's a, I think that as as humorous as that is, there's a danger of of losing sight of, I think how beautifully so that God is still singing to you. Mm -hmm. Um, whether or not that that comes out as a full song it even I almost echoes what you said at the start of your songwriting journey was a collaboration and in a collaboration it's always this piecing together of different people's perspectives and and things and so to me it I have never reflected on this but when I was at the height of my songwriting career it was every single moment I was writing down every thought that would come to me and I had like you said this this like eight hours worth of voice notes that I would listen to during drives Mm. and so all it was was all of these pieces of prayers and this desire to piece them together into a song to me I'm only realizing this as I speak it once you said it is that like uh, why has it been difficult for me for me to write a song as of late and it's because I'm not even uh, opening myself to the pieces that God is usually that I am normally receptive to, because right. uh, it is a piecing together of the, the prayers. And if you're not open to those pieces, and and all you're set on is I need to write a song, which is uh, has been a a wall for me. Is like I gotta write a song, and now there's this. It's just. I'm just thinking of the song, the end product, who would receive it, how they would receive it, and all of this stuff, and not at the very heart of it, which is God just singing to me and then writing that down, and wow, that was a beautiful melody, and write that down and whatever. And So I think, uh, thank you for that. Oh, thank you. I was like, it's the story of my life. (laughs) I think it's so, I think, yeah, it is dangerous for when people expect things from you, but also beautiful to note that sometimes God doesn't work like that and sometimes people don't write like that and I think um, you know in the early years like you say like it's easy to write songs but I I believe that the next pieces that we write they're gonna be they will reflect on the status of where we are now and no I'm just I'm really inspired because I think that is a thought that I've always pondered, but I think you like you fleshed it out like perfectly. Amen. And as it fleshes out before our very eyes, I think that's something that uh, music and mission is becoming a prayer for that. Um, I think uh, initially, I you know I didn't know what this was at the beginning, definitely, and. You know, is it just, uh, of course, beautifully getting to hear these finished prayers and songs, but more and more, I, I am wanting to hear the the in the works stuff, you know, and the and the, the little pieces of prayer because there is no platform for that. There's no place for people to feel I I can only share something if it's fully complete. 
And when that is the notion, then it's all of the fear of like, well, is this good enough? It's never going to be good enough. Uh, some people were talking about being perfectionists and like, you know, it's never going to be done. But to be able to just share something that, you know, God told you, I mean, because we don't do that, you know, for like for talks. We don't say, oh, you got to listen to this whole talk or like, let me tell you this whole talk that I heard. You just say, hey, there was this quote I heard from this homily. And you share that with passion and excitement. But for some reason with songs, there's almost a wall that's like, but I have to make it a full song before I can share it, which is beautiful. But I think also part of the prayer is becoming and hopefully as this platform starts to shift or trying to f- figure out ways that this is possible mm-hmm. but that it be- can become a place where people can share like you said all of these voice notes and what myself Gabby and Vanessa did of just sharing these little tiny snippets of prayer that came up through through music and melody and for that to be something that can reach out and uplift people and you know so I think uh, it, it all is summarized by Um, Pope John Paul II, he says, artists, the more conscious they are of their gift, the more they can give thanks and raise to God a hymn of praise. And I think that as we, I think that in this very moment, I have become a lot more conscious of what the gift of songwriting is. And it isn't necessarily creating completed songs there, but that is a beautiful fruit of the gift of songwriting. But I think the gift Beneath that, like, what is a heart disposed to songwriting? And Kui Bimbo talked about this a lot, like having a heart for songwriting. It really means that you're just have this encounter with God all the time. And as you shared, that you sort of hear it as a melody and then write that down or you record it and you just remember it. Um, That's a lot more attainable. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more attainable than you have to be able to write this complete song and people have to you know god has to speak through it it's more just open your heart to god singing to you and write it down praise god this is so good i just need yeah, this this, is good. this conversation just has to happen like 24 hours <laughs> instagram live only limits us to one hour unfortunately <laughs> so true <laughs> and since there's only one hour what is your next song before we run out of time <laughs> <laughs> um the next song is called Embrace, not to be mixed up with the other, other song from Live Loud called Embrace, <laughs> which is a uh, a male-driven voice yes. song. <laughs> yes, very very male. Um, this song is actually ten years old, and again, this is the song that I worked with my brother Ron, and my cousins Nathan and Isaac, and my kuyas. They're not even Filipino. They're like white and Korean. Kuya Mike and Peter Buen. And so, yeah, sometimes probably we might get emotional because when I recorded it the other day um, for the Singles for Christ conference, it's called Fully Alive. And then this song was written for a 2010 YFC conference called Alive. And I guess a rush of nostalgia and how God in a decade has always been faithful. Like there have been drawbacks, but um, it's how you perceive them and how you treat it. You either take it and transform it to something beautiful or, you know, just be like super sad and be inactive. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) This this isn't screen (laughs) story. Oh my gosh, be my friend, be my friend, please. Yes, so this is called Embrace. Embrace, all right. Take it away. Don't go and act.
it. Teary eye there. Woo! Beautiful. So what is the prayer behind that song? Because you've given us the context, but not the prayer yet. Right. Well, I wrote this when I was 15, very LG, still today. No, I'm just kidding. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> So I've been looking at um, the lyrics, and a part of me, I was sharing this to a friend, and I was like, why did I write that? I'm so hurt. Like, I'm okay. <laughs> like, here's God, and for some reason, I ran away. And nothing else will ever be the same until I come back to God. So, yeah, I'm like, why did I run away? You know, so that's like, <laughs> these are the thoughts of like, when I look at um, past songs, like, why did I run away? And, um, you know, what really gets me is the bridge where it's take me, hold me, Lord, I am yours. If I could pretty much be like the entire song and then I'll just like so <laughs> sobbing at the sides. But like, you know, when you are in full communion and union with God, there's nothing else to say. But, you know, Lord, I'm sorry for, for piecing it, but I'm back here bigger and better than before. And, Take me, hold me, like I am yours from this day and forever for the rest of the days that I live until I see you in heaven. Look at that teary eye, like, oh my God. <laughs> Amen. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that prayer. Thank you, God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Well, we're coming up towards the end of this, unfortunately. Oh, man. Uh, I wanted to troll you more. <laughs> yeah and i wanted to hear more of your uh the things your dad's working on in the background <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like ah oh, that's fine this is live guys this is yeah. very very live <laughs> so live the more you say it's live the more it gets suspicious <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay Praise um <laughs> uh, i think um from the letter to artists there is something uh very loud to me the some of the last words that uh pope john paul ii uh, gives us this is your task humanity in every age and even today looks to works of art to shed light upon its path and its destiny and i think uh even more so now in pandemic and you talk about songs coming from an attachment to sacraments and we know that many people are still unable to even physically get to sacraments so i think just that responsibility to continue to be open to write and to share um what is uh in what ways are you still sort of sharing uh, besides the liturgical contest which is awesome that you entered but is there uh, other ways you're sharing your music or things that are this gift of worship um, I guess in my spare time, I like to record like mini short covers of other worship songs on my Instagram. And I think it's a way for me to obviously take care of my spiritual self, but also practice your craft. Because I think that's what a lot of people or songwriters forget is that Yes, you can write songs. Yes, you can write lyrics. Um, let God like work through you. But coming from, I guess I'm a technical musical person. Actually, one of the first few things I studied in post-secondary was music. And I think that really oh, nice. helped. But, um, you know, taking your time to practice. Practice writing and practice music, practice singing, practice your scales, your chords, all of that jazz. And I guess that that's what keeps it alive. And though it's repetitive, I think being a Catholic, a lot of things are repetitive, right? So. <laughs> Dang, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I sin all the time and I'm like, yeah, well, how many times have this reading was showed up during this mass? So we're good, we're good. Just go to confessions, okay guys. That's good. I love the, the way you put it so simply of, of practicing. Um, 
of you prepare for a talk and if you don't read anything new it's the same talk every time and you as a painter a visual artist if you don't learn to master new mediums it will always but the moment you start to learn these new things it, your your artistic vocabulary increases so uh, definitely pope john paul ii he said we have an obligation not to waste this talent but to develop it mm. and uh i think Thank you, uh, Monica. This has been super enlightening to me. Just sort of some of the building blocks of songwriting, rather than dwelling so much on the beautifully finished prayers that, and and well-worn prayers that you've been able to share. I think it's also about uh, discovering those building blocks in the foundation of songwriting. Uh, number one, just hearing and being open to that encounter with God, and and writing it down, uh, singing it out, and then developing those talents. It's, this has been really very simply put for me and very important. So thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Wow. Are we friends? <laughs> <laughs> Something about being a songwriter, you have this natural connection to all other songwriters, especially Catholic worship songwriters. <laughs> Praise God for that icon. Amen. Are we met? Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. What is your very final, unfortunately, last song for today? Oh, the song sucks. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm, like, scaring everyone. I'm, like, oh, if you ever get to meet me, I'm, like, I'm a huge troll. I'm very cynical. <laughs> but, like, correct me on that. Um, <laughs> this last song, very, very very dear to me. This is the very first song that I wrote by myself um, entitled Reaching. I wrote this when I was 16. So it's turning 10 next year. Oh my gosh, my baby. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and this song, um, when I was thinking about the concept of reaching, I felt like obviously there's worship songs that worship God, which is great. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's something about how human we are and the tendency that we have to sin. And knowing that it's okay, you can pick yourself up because that's why Christ died for us, it's for us. And to keep pursuing him, keep reaching out to him um, at your lowest points. Even if you break into a million or a billion pieces, I also get made fun of a lot by that. I'm like, okay, break into 10 pieces. Let's see how that happens. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's just a story and then um, and then just go to confession. <laughs> so yeah. Amen. Before that, let's end in prayer. In the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Lord, just for helping us to piece together what your calling for us as songwriters truly means lord just helping us to simplify and be reminded of the way that you are singing to us especially in the sacraments and lord we just ask um, that you would give us grace and the push and the opportunities to piece together some of these moments whether it's collaborating with others uh, sharing some of these things or taking them all and by your grace making more songs for you then let your will be done lord um just remind us uh, and anybody listening if it's feels like it's been a while that all we need to do is just uh, open our hearts to more uh, encounters with you and, and to just look for those little melodies and those little lines that you're giving us every day uh, to be reminded lord that you are reaching out to us every single moment every single day amen Thank you.
pray.